Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting continuation of our 15 days of DaVinci 15 tutorial series we're going to be taking a look at creating a simple little LumaFade transition inside of Fusion inside of DaVinci Resolve. So here we go, we've got our two clips here we're going to be fading from our wide shot underneath you can see here into a close-up up above you see these clips are already graded but I'll show you a trick on how to grade them even after they're in a Fusion composition. So let's first of all add these into a Fusion comp, so right click, new Fusion clip and now you can see these are both one clip. If we go into Fusion, we get our two media in nodes here already merged together. Very excellent. We can turn this off for now. But let's say we want to go and change the way these clips look individually. We can go back to our edit page, right click on our Fusion clip, go to open in timeline. And now we have access to both of our clips independently again. So we can go to a color page and we can, you know, do whatever crazy stuff we want to do. And it'll update before we go into our Fusion comp. So very nice. So now back into our edit page, go back up to our timeline and select a fusion clip, go to fusion. And now we can make our effect. So it's pretty easy. We're going to be fading on our close up clip, which is this one right here. We can rename it to close up and hit control space to add in the Luma here. It automatically adds it. And you can see right now we get a pretty cool effect already, which I'm, I'm digging very neat. But we want to animate this, so we'll go to the point we want our transition, which will say right about here where the motion starts. And we'll add a keyframe to start this. And you see right now we need to scoot our load control all the way up to get this to key out. But then it will fade on the highlights first and then the darker parts. And we need to go the other way. So we're going to hit invert. And then we're going to bring our highs down. And now that fades it off. Now we've still got our keyframe in place. We'll go forward a couple frames, maybe eight. And we'll fade this on. Zoop. Zop, and that automatically creates a keyframe. Go back halfway in between and we'll sort of smooth this guy out. So make that there. And there we go. Then we'll also blur this out some because our blown out sky sort of makes this not as nice. So we'll blur it out a good little bit. That's too much blur. Bring this back some and we'll fix our sky a different way. So we'll create a background. And we'll change this to a vertical and we'll see what this is. So we'll make the bottom black like it is. That's fine. And we'll make the top white. Excellent. So now we get this gradient happening, which is pretty nice. And we're going to go ahead and merge these together. And if we view our merge node in viewer one, you can see right now our background is in our foreground input, which we don't want. We want our background in our background and close up in the foreground. And then we're going to add another Luma key before this. And we'll basically just create a simple little sky replacement, pseudo sky replacement. So invert this. There we go. Now we've got that. So now if we go back and view our transition, you see it's a little bit, you see it's a good little bit smoother, but we have our gradient in the background, which we do not want. So what we're going to do to fix that is just take the output of our close-up and bring that into the foreground input of our merge. And then we're going to take the output of our keyer here and have that drive this transition. So if we just pump this in right away, you can see there we have it. Now it is a much smoother transition. So now you can see part of why nodes are so great. Because we've got just that extra little bit in there. Because we're able to modify what we are transitioning from with this little section down here and then merge back our original one without having to mess with layers going around. So there's just a little bit of stuff. Ended up being a little bit more complicated of a LumaFade transition than I intended, which is good because now this tutorial is better, I think. And of course you can do any sort of other gradient back here for any time you have clipping stuff. It can be one like this, or you can use you know any sort of noise texture. That's like blurred out some. Yeah, something like this would work too. So if we replace our background with fast noise. We play through our transition. You can see now we get these other cool effects in there. So it's not linear. Like that's pretty neat too. And gosh darn nodes are great. You can, you know, of course, combine the two also if you wanted to. So do that guy and then that guy. You get some of each. Oh goodness, this is exciting. I'm having a good time. Blend them halfway ish. You could multiply. Oh man, so good. So anyway, we are going to wrap up this little tutorial here. I think it ended up better than I thought it would be, which is always nice. 
If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't, give it a dislike. No matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. Also, any thoughts for future tutorials because that helps me out because I need more ideas. And you guys know what you want better than I do. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Meester Media YouTube channel because we're putting out a ton of DaVinci Resolve 15 content over the next few days, which is not something you want to miss. Look at all, all these cool nodes that we came up with. I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Also, if you just want to be a peach, you can go over to meesternmedia.com slash products and type in the promo code RESOLVE15 for the duration of this tutorial marathon, and you can get 15% off your entire order. So once again, I've been Theo with Meesner Media. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye.